Hi, my name is Sakari Lehtinen. Welcome to Getting Started with Location Editor. Location Editor is used for automatically assigning location information to objects, or even splitting their geometry. It can be used to enrich and enhance the models, for example for location-based quantity takeoff or 4D simulations. Before we look deeper into it, let me just quickly show you what it can do. First, I have imported my model to SimpleBIM as usual. The starting point can be a single model or multiple merged models. Next, I want to define the locations to my project. I import the location prisms from another IFC file. Here we are. As you can see, the locations are defined with 3D volumes and in this case they are representing building sections. Note that the slabs, roofs and walls run through the multiple locations. Now I process the model with the default settings. And here's my end result. The objects have been split according to the location prisms. SimpleBIM has calculated new quantities for the split objects and the objects now know which location they belong to. Finally, I can export the split model to IFC. Here we are, just as an example, in the Solid Previewer and we can see that the location information is now in use and the objects are split and they have the new quantities. Very cool, right? Okay, let's learn how it works. First of all, in order to use the location editor, you need to enable it. Basically, this will add the location properties which are needed by the tool. Right now, the location prisms need to be defined in an IFC file. You cannot yet create them inside the simple BIM. Any IFC supporting tool could be used to create them, even SketchUp. There are a few different ways to import the prisms. You can either have them ready-made like these prisms here and import them as they are. Or you could have a sort of 3D footprints defined and import them with the create location prisms by building or building story. In this case, the simple beam will extrude the footprints according to the model's levels or the total height. For example, like this. One of the key ideas here is that the process will automatically add location identifiers to the objects. In order this to work, the location prisms need to have the location identifiers defined. There can be up to 10 different ones. So you could have the building story in the first one, section name in the second, maybe apartment in the third and so on. The identifiers could be already defined in the imported prisms or they can be assigned manually here in the simple BIM. For example, these ones could be section A, P, C and D. Third option is to copy, set or create them automatically with the help of the templates. In general, the location properties are just normal properties. You can edit them with any basic simple BIM tools. Next, I check if my setup is correct. I can quickly isolate the location prisms, building elements, objects to be split or not to split. By default, we don't split, uh, for example, the doors and windows. Although you could override this default setup simply by selecting, for example, the windows and setting them as split objects, like this. Or the other way around, I don't want to split these trees. Done. The final thing left to do is to configure the splitting settings. You can set them separately, like this, or you can have the settings come up every time you start the resolving process. Note that the basic option is to process the objects in the not decided yet bucket. If you don't want to process something, you should drag and drop these objects to the excluded bucket. The other option is to process only the selected ones. Basic split is just a straightforward boolean operation between the prisms and the building element objects. Smart split tries to be smarter in several ways. It won't split the objects if the end result is smaller than the tolerance. It won't split the walls along their axis or slabs horizontally because this could cause double quantities in the borders of the prisms. You can also control whether or not you want to recalculate the quantities. Normally you do, because after the splitting the original quantities are no longer valid. 
By default, the original objects and the location prisms are removed automatically. If for some reason you want to see them after the process is finished, then uncheck these options. The splitting creates new objects with new GUIDs, global unique identifiers. Maybe your receiving application is using the GUIDs for its operations. How about when you get an updated model and want to split it? You would probably want the GUIDs for the split objects to be the same as the first time. GUID mapping will create a special file to the same folder as where the model is. This file includes rules how to reuse the GUIDs. The mapping file is used for the updated model if it is found from the same folder as the updated model and if the project GUID of the model is the same as stored in the mapping file. The actual objects will get the same GUID as before if a rule is found from the file with the same parent GUID and location identifier. Note also that the parent GUID and the splitting status are also stored to the objects. You might need these in your downstream applications. That's it. Now you are ready to resolve the locations. You can either do it without the splitting with the resolve button or with the splitting with the resolve and split button. One final note. The splitter is a tool in SimpleBIM. And as any other tool, the splitting can be run from a template or even from a script to automate the process. But that is a subject for another tutorial. Thank you for watching. See you next time.